remember, you can pause this. What are we trying to do? We're trying to graph. Graph what? We're graphing x minus 1 over x squared. First thing we do is we find the domain. So yeah, we're going through and we set x equal to 0 and we solved for that guy. So you can never divide by 0. Next, we're going to get the intercepts, <clears throat> the x and y intercepts. We're not going to have a y intercept because when x is 0, our function's undefined. Now, we're going to get the x-intercepts by letting y be 0. So we go, and we set it equal to 0. That is only where the numerator is equal to 0. So our x-intercept happens at 1, 0. That's our game plan. Our game plan. First, we're going to find the domain and the intercepts. We've already done that. Probably should have put this first. Then, we find the asymptotes. We're about to do that now. Then, we find out where it's increasing and decreasing. Then, we find the mins and max. Then, we find the concavity on our inflection. And, then we sketch the curve. Let me put that into focus for you. Focus, people. This is a long process. We're already done with the first two parts. Asymptotes of our function, x minus 1 over x squared. To do that, the vertical asymptote, well, OK, sure. I guess it's the vertical. No, vertical. The vertical asymptote is when x is equal to 0, because you can never divide by 0. You can never divide by 0. So now we're trying to find the horizontal asymptotes. In order to do that, we run the limit as x goes to 0. We divide by the leading term, I mean the highest power of x, and what's next? You reduce those fractions. When we reduce those fractions, we have 1 over x minus 1 over x squared divided by 1. So then you run those limits in that numerator, it goes to 0, because both of those go to 0. Now, we go on. Uh, similarly, when x goes to minus infinity, that thing goes to 0. So, our horizontal asymptote happens when y is equal to Zero. Nice. Next. What's next? We're finding the place where it's increasing and decreasing. So we're going to need to take the first derivative of our function. We use the quotient rule that's low d high minus high d low all over low low. And then we go go and we clean that up by factoring. We pull out our common factor. Yeah. And I guess we should reduce, but we're going to test the intervals. We're going to test the intervals, our critical values. We set the denominator and the numerator equal to 0. And we find our critical values are at 0 and 2. So we put them on a number line. OK, fine. And we're testing what? We're testing the derivative. So, we put in a value to the left of 0, ah, and our interval is negative. Then, we choose a number in between 0 and 2, and our derivative is positive. Then, we put in a number <clears throat> in between 2 and infinity, and we find out that our derivative is negative. So in summary, we're decreasing from minus infinity to zero, and then again from two to infinity, and we're increasing from zero to two. Fabulous. Next step. In the next step, what are we trying to do? Oh, in summary, because we're about to do our first derivative test to find our max and our min. Yep. First derivative test. So, if we're decreasing, then increasing, then increasing and decreasing, this is from part F in our game plan. Our zero is an imposter. It looks like it's going to be a minimum, but it's not. It's an asymptote. Then, our two is an actual max, using the first derivative test. So 2 is a max. Let's go find that maximum value. We plug that back into the original function. So now that that's in the original function, we let x equal 2. And when we do, 
we get one-fourth. So what's our point? Our point is two one-fourth. That's our maximum. Now, we're going to do concavity and inflection. Sure. So we reduce. Why don't we do that? Boom. It'll make getting our second derivative nicer. Let's go get our second derivative. We're using the quotient rule. That's low d high minus high d low all over low low. So then we go go and we factor out our common factor again. Yeah, let's reduce. Oh, it's like they fought. Yeah. So now we're getting our critical values, but first let's clean it up. We're setting the numerator and denominator equal to zero. We solve those, and we find that our critical values are three and zero. We put those on a number line, and we're testing the second derivative. Let me put that in there. Pick a value to the left of zero, like minus one, and we get negatives on the numerator and the denominator. We pick a number in between zero and three, and we get a negative. And then we pick one to the right of three, and we see we're concave down from minus infinity to zero, and then from zero to three, and we're concave up from three to infinity. Let's go get that inflection point, because our inflection point happened when x was equal to three. That's where our concavity changed. And we're putting it into the original function. We evaluate it at three, and we find our point to be three and two ninths. Next. What? Let's freaking graph it. Let's put it all together. So it looks like we have an asymptote at x is equal to zero. And we have a zero at the point one zero. And our horizontal asymptotes are at zero. And we're increasing in that interval. We're decreasing in those intervals. Our inflection point happens there. Nope, that's our max. Our inflection point happens here. All we got left to do is draw the lines. It's down, it's up, it hits those points, and we're done. <laughs>